Speaking of prayer, if you've not been with KOP through a winter, uh, as you leave today, pray before you go up the drive. Do I hear an amen? amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, seriously, if you haven't been here through uh, at KOP in a winter, just be cautious as you leave. Uh, if somebody's up there waiting to turn out, just wait down here at the bottom. But seriously, otherwise you get up in that. If, if, sometimes even when it's rainy, it's a little bit slick, but you get a day like today, so just be cautious as you leave. Um, we'll have it broke up a little bit with small groups going on today, some other things going on afterwards, so that'll help a little bit, but I, I thought about that. It's like, yeah, let's pray as we, <laughs> as we head out that way. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a sign up there at the top, you're in the mission field, right, but you don't want to enter heaven necessarily on your way out either, so be cautious up there. All right. Yeah, and small groups uh, meet today, chapters 1 and 2. So we're all reading a book together. It's been referenced um, in class, um, chapters 1 and 2, and then we'll be discussing that. There's a reading guide stuck in the front of that. Your group leaders all have uh, some extra copies of those books if you didn't get one. So some good stuff. You're not about two, three chapters, or three, three paragraphs into, and it's like, ah, this is, this is good to talk about right here. But we'll, we'll look at a couple of chapters today. All right. Think with me a little bit, um, Guns, we've already talked about this a little bit this morning. Uh, police shows on, on TV through the years, uh, it's one thing it seems like it's always existed. It, either police shows or uh, as we came a little bit later, well, I was going to say no, it would be Perry Mason be up there too. I was thinking you really got into the, the law scene. But think about Dragnet and Hill Street Blues. Let's be careful out there. Uh, law and Order. I had to look up to see when that ended. Uh, now it's in syndication so much. The Rookie, there's other ones out now. So all these are separated by decades, all kind of covering the same theme, of course, and then other shows like them through the years. But they all share something that has not changed over the years, and that's interrogation. Interrogation. You've got the uh, Sergeant Joe Friday on Dragnet would say what? Just the facts, man. That's all he wanted. He wanted just the facts. Interrogation room. It's often the, the little room at the police station. Uh, not much attention given to how that room's decorated, but there's usually a few items in it. There's usually the table with the light on it, the single light in the room, two chairs. That's it. That's, this is what would exist in this interrogation room. And it's not only about interrogation at this point, it's also about intimidation. You talk. What do you know? Where were you on Saturday night at 8 o'clock? I mean, that's what's going on. Interrogation and intimidation. And it's in this situation that we actually find a couple of followers of Jesus in Acts chapter 4. Peter and John find themselves in this situation in Acts chapter 4. We want to read, read this this morning. In the Bible book of Acts, we, we start reading very early on about Jesus returning back to heaven. We, we've we read in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, about him dying and him coming back to life. And then Luke picks up the rest of that story as he returns to heaven. And then there's this church, these followers of Jesus, like wildfire, are spreading all over the known world at that time. So these two followers, Peter and John, they'd recently been preaching in Jerusalem. In fact, they'd even healed this crippled man. He was a beggar. They healed him kind of adds to the frenzy of what's going on, good and bad. And it wasn't long after this, though, that the siren sounded and the red and blue lights start flashing as we start reading in verse 1. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John... And because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers and elders and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, were there. So were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them, and they began to question them. By what power or name did you do this? Or thinking back to this healing. By what power or what name did you do this? As they respond to the interrogation from these 
religious police, if you will, what can we learn from these two guys? Well, we can learn the facts. Number one, it's our duty to speak up. It's our duty to speak up. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Peter and John knew they had to speak up for Jesus. They knew they had to do it. It's like the motto that PBS had for so long, if we don't do it, who will? This is what they're thinking. Peter and John had heard Jesus say this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. It's the very last thing that Matthew tells us about the life of Jesus. Peter and John heard this. They, they knew they had some talking to do. The fact is, they knew it was their duty. Peter and John had also heard these words of Jesus. This is in Acts 1, verse 8. Jesus said, You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. They heard Jesus say this as well. Peter and John knew they had a job to do. The fact is they knew that they had to speak up. It was their duty to speak up. These two disciples weren't waiting for Sunday morning to come around to talk about Jesus. They didn't let the calendar dictate their message. Wherever they went, they knew it was their duty to speak up. Hence, we have Acts, or its longer name, the Acts of the Apostles. The things that they were out doing, and especially the things that they were out saying. And we aren't exempt from this duty either. We too are disciples. We've been taught, we've heard Jesus' words as he says to tell, to talk. And our commission is the same as theirs. Instead of Judea and Samaria, it may be the workplace or our neighborhood. Instead of Jerusalem, it might be King of Prussia, it might be Norristown, it might be Philly, it might be where you live. The fact is, we must tell our family about this Jesus that we know. We must tell our friends about this God that we serve. We must let the cashier know why we're telling her that you gave me too much money back. We must speak up when others say to be silent. Back to Acts 4. Look at verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, which is what God had promised, what Jesus had promised, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame, and we're being asked how he was healed, then, then know this. You and all the people of Israel, it's by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. It's our duty to speak up, but clearly that can only happen because it's our duty to know why we speak up. It's our duty to speak up, but it's our duty to know why we speak up. Why do you do it? It's the question Peter and John are being asked. Why do you keep going on this? They're being asked. That's some explaining to do. See, they're on one side of the table, and the religious police are on the other side of the table. The light's on. They want to know why. Where were you when this happened, and why do you keep doing this? I like the way the message renders Peter's answer. With that, Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, let loose. Rulers and leaders of the people, if we've been brought to trial today for helping a sick man, but under investigation regarding this healing, I'll be completely frank with you. We have nothing to hide. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one you killed on a cross, the one God raised from the dead, by means of his name, this man stands before you healthy and whole. 
Jesus is the stone that you masons threw out, which is now the cornerstone. Salvation comes no other way. No other name has been or will be given to us by which we can be saved, only this one. Hmm. The fact is, Peter says what he does because of what Jesus did. And it's what drove Peter to do what he did. Time with Jesus, time listening to Jesus is why he's doing and saying what he's saying. The question they had to answer is the same one that we have to answer. Why do you speak up? What do you do when asked about your faith? And that, that ebbs and flows through time. Sometimes we, we're asked often, sometimes we're not asked any. What do you do when asked about your faith? Do you know why you do what you do? When, when you speak up, do you know why you speak up? When a child wants to know why you have to go to church so often, why do we have to go back there again? Why? When that lady at work wants to know why you read that Bible app on your break, why do you? We must tell our friend the reason that we're sharing Jesus with them is because of what he's done for us. We know about Jesus' history. We know about Jesus' story. We must tell our unbelieving family members that we follow Jesus because he's proven to be faithful. It's our duty to know why we speak up. Verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that, that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin, the Jewish political council. And then they conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they ask. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they performed a notable sign, and we can't deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again, and they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to listen to him? You be the judges. As for us, we can't help speaking about what we've seen and what we've heard. So after further threats, they let them go. They couldn't decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. It's our duty to speak up. It's our duty to know why we speak up. And it's our duty to never give up. It's our duty to never give up. They called them in again, and they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to listen to him? You be the judges. As for us, we can't help but speaking about what we've seen and what we've heard. Can we fault Peter and John if they'd have just quietly gone to another city? If they'd just, you're right, this isn't going to work here, and they'd have just quietly left town and gone somewhere else. Maybe they could have gone somewhere else less volatile than the capital city. Let's not be there. Let's go do it over here. It's a little bit smaller. The synagogue's a little bit smaller over here. The Sanhedrin's not convening over here. Maybe they should have just kept out of public gatherings to get all together and just met in homes. But what kind of person keeps talking after being jailed and interrogated and threatened in public. People like 10-year-old Joshua, people like him keep talking. Joshua, as I, it's told by ICommitToPray.com, it's a 10-year-old Ugandan boy has been beat by his father and uncle ever since they learned three months ago that he'd left Islam to follow Jesus. Despite the repeated beatings, Joshua has not wavered in his faith. He loves Jesus, and he knows the suffering is worthwhile. And it continues, Joshua began attending church one year ago after his sister became a Christian. She was beaten for a week when her father learned of her conversion. 
The child's father warned them that he would kill them if they left Islam. But Joshua knows Jesus is worthy of his devotion. Joshua's father still forces him to attend mosque every week, but he simply prays in the name of Jesus. And then on Sundays, he secretly attends church. People like 10-year-old Joshua keep talking. And people like Pastor Huang keep talking. Same source. A Chinese house church pastor who has been harassed by authorities in recent months remains resolute in his commitment to worship God freely. After spending five days in detention, Pastor Huang returned to find the doors of his church building locked by the government. As policemen looked on and took video of the pastor, he sawed the lock off the church door and ripped down the public notices stating that the church was closed. Pastor Huang has been detained for leading a church service after Chinese officials had ordered him to stop meeting. Never give up. Some of those stories are from another time and another place. Some of them are from this month. Never give up. The fact is, Peter and John didn't. And the fact is, Joshua hasn't and Pastor Huang hasn't. What might cause someone to give up telling others about Jesus? Well, in some countries, the law. Peter and John and Pastor Huang have defied those laws. We've known people in our own midst that have defied laws where they're from to follow Jesus. What might cause someone to give up telling others about Jesus? Well, in some places, family. But Joshua, he follows the one who sits by his heavenly father. In our job, it might be humiliation that keeps us quiet. But then we read the story and I wonder what it's like to be stripped and placed on a cross for the world to see. At the soccer game, we think we're too pushy if we invite others to our Sunday school class. And I realize that sometimes our biggest persecutor might be ourselves. Peter and John, they remind us it's our duty to never give up speaking up. It's our duty to speak up. It's our duty to know why we speak up. And it's our duty to never give either one of those up. Look at the results when Peter and John did all three. First, because Peter and John were preaching initially, more people followed Jesus. Because they were teaching, because they were talking about Jesus, more followed Jesus. Because of two, because of one, and two following the one, well, let's read. Verse 4, But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Hmm. That's what started the problems with the religious police. That's what started the interrogation. And because Peter and John spoke up, more people now had a duty to speak up and, and know why to speak up and then to never give up. But there's more to tell. Verse 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why did the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. 
So Peter and John spoke up, and the people believed. Peter and John kept speaking up, and they knew why to speak up, and they never gave up. And then what happened? They looked up, they spoke up, and after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God boldly. And then they kept on speaking up, and the cycle just continues. It's the book of Acts. Now on TV, the bad guys are usually caught by the end of the episode. Either their story doesn't match, or they end up confessing. Sometimes it happens right there around the interrogation table. But Peter and John's episode doesn't end in this chapter. In fact, it hasn't even ended yet today. The story is still being told, and now we are the ones in the story. We've joined this number that continues to grow, and we've taken note that these men, they've been with Jesus. Now, may others say the same for us as we speak up. And that's just the facts. Andrew, let's stand and sing.
workmen looked on and took video of the pastor, he sawed the lock off the church door and ripped down the public notices stating that the church was closed. Pastor Huang has been detained for leading a church service after Chinese officials had ordered him to stop meeting. Never give up. Some of those stories are from another time and another place. Some of them are from this month. Never give up. The fact is, Peter and John didn't. And the fact is, Joshua hasn't and Pastor Huang hasn't. What might cause someone to give up telling others about Jesus? Well, in some countries, the law. Peter and John and Pastor Huang have defied those laws. We've known people in our own midst that have defied laws where they're from to follow Jesus. What might cause someone to give up telling others about Jesus? Well, in some places, family. But Joshua, he follows the one who sits by his heavenly father. In our job, it might be humiliation that keeps us quiet. But then we read the story and I wonder what it's like to be stripped and placed on a cross for the world to see. In the soccer game, we think we're too pushy if we invite others to our Sunday school class. And I realize that sometimes our biggest persecutor might be ourselves. Peter and John, they remind us it's our duty to never give up speaking up. It's our duty to speak up. It's our duty to know why we speak up. And it's our duty to never give either one of those up. Look at the results when Peter and John did all three. First, because Peter and John were preaching initially, more people followed Jesus. Because they were teaching, because they were talking about Jesus, more followed Jesus. Because of two, because of one, and two following the one, well, let's read. Verse 4, But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Hmm. That's what started the problems with the religious police. That's what started the interrogation. And because Peter and John spoke up, more people now had a duty to speak up and, and know why to speak up and then to never give up. But there's more to tell. Verse 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why did the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So Peter and John spoke up and the people believed. Peter and John kept speaking up and they knew why to speak up and they never gave up. And then what happened? They looked up, they spoke up, and after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. And then they kept on speaking up, and the cycle just continues. It's the book of Acts. Now on TV, the bad guys are usually caught by the end of the episode. Either their story doesn't match, or they end up confessing. Sometimes it happens right there around the interrogation table. But Peter and John's episode doesn't end in this chapter. In fact, it hasn't even ended yet today. The story is still being told, and now we are the ones in the story. 
we've joined this number that continues to grow. And we've taken note that these men, they've been with Jesus. Now, may others say the same for us as we speak up. And that's just the facts. Andrew, let's stand and sing.